Was Jake DeBrusque injured at the Winter Classic? All signs point to yes. And I'm also taking a look at the three biggest questions facing the Boston Bruins in 2023 here on today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoked beat. Today is Wednesday, January 4th, and I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your day every day, the podcast free and available on your favorite podcast app, whether it be Apple, Spotify, Google, Pocket Casts, Amazon. And also on YouTube, where you can get the podcast in video form and some breaking bonus news content as well. You can find the show on Twitter, Instagram at Locked NHL Bruins, and I'm at Ian C. McLaren posting dad jokes and hockey tweets and some show recommendations, uh, books, music, all kinds of stuff. Anyways, let's begin with a developing story. Uh, I saw it this morning from Mark Diver, who covers the Providence Bruins for the New England Hockey Journal and NHL.com. And you might have seen some photos after the Winter Classic on Monday of Jake DeBrusque in a walking boot. He was apparently injured during the game before scoring uh, the game-winning goal after taking a shot off his skate. He was seen in the walking boot, and Mark Diver saying, with Jake DeBrusque in the walking boot, look for Boston to recall Chris Wagner from Providence. He's having an excellent season in the AHL, leading by example, scored the game-winning goal, and was the first star with an outstanding two-way game on Saturday. We all know, of course, that Chris Wagner has been buried in Providence for each of the past two regular seasons. He was called up in the 2022 playoffs and played in the series against the Carolina Hurricanes. This season, in 27 games, he's got nine goals and two assists for 11 points. With Providence, uh, he ranks third on the team in goals behind Vinny Lettieri and Luke Toporowski one ahead of Fabian Lysel with one, sorry, seven more games played. Lysel, of course, has been in Halifax playing with uh, Sweden at the World Juniors here for the past couple of weeks. They play tonight in the semifinals against the Czech Republic. So if Jake DeBrusque were to miss any length of time, that would obviously make an impact on the Boston Bruins. You would expect if Wagner's recalled, he'll play on the fourth line, say with Felino, uh, Nosik, Wagner, and then a third line of Hall, Coyle, Smith, or Greer. But it will impact the top as well. You'll probably have maybe Pasternak go back to the top line and then a second line of Hall, Zaka, and Krejci, if that works. I'm not even sure if that uh is ideal. So we'll have to wait and see what happens if the Bruins make an official announcement um, and keep an eye on Jake DeBrusque. Now that kind of leads into my topic for today, which is the three biggest questions facing the Boston Bruins in 2023. Could be a bit of a transition year for the Bruins with a loaded roster at the moment, but with some potential turnover heading into 2023-24 regular season. Let's start with the obvious question. Can this team win the Stanley Cup? The answer is yes. I, I don't see why not. At the moment, they are the top team in the NHL without question. Uh, they rank 
first in total points, in point percentage, in goal differential. And right now they are the team to beat in the NHL. In fact, uh, there were just some updated Stanley Cup odds released. The Bruins, the favorites over the defending champion, Colorado Avalanche. If you like the model presented by The Athletic, I believe it said they have a 24% chance of winning the Cup this season. Next best team was the Maple Leafs at 15%. The Bruins have 62 points through 37 games. They're six ahead of second place Carolina, who lost last night. Uh, They have a goal differential of plus 57, which is tops in the NHL, second in goal scoring, and they've allowed the fewest goals as well. So, add it all up, they certainly have a realistic chance at winning the Stanley Cup this season. And don't forget the motivation factor of winning for David Krejci, who came back after spending a year in Czechia, Patrice Bergeron, who re-upped for one season, Nick Foligno, who came to Boston by the encouragement of Patrice Bergeron for a chance to win. I mentioned on yesterday's podcast how Nick Foligno had a speech at intermission during the Winter Classic imploring the Bruins not to waste that opportunity. That's going to be a message that is going to be rammed home over and over throughout the second half of the season and certainly into the playoffs. The Bruins have a special group. Patrice Bergeron has said that. He reiterated that after the Winter Classic. They're not ashamed to say it. It's true. And... It's the kind of tight-knit group that will come together and put it all on the line when things matter most. You can believe that. We'll get to our other pressing questions for the 2023 calendar year here for the Bruins in a moment. But first, this episode is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from pro football to the college bowl season, NHL, NBA. They've got it all at betonline.net in terms of futures and in-game props. They're the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more. At Bet Online, where the game starts. So, my first question about the Bruins in 2023 is can they win the cup? What we've seen of them so far this season, yes, the answer is yes, they can win the cup. Will they win the cup? Well, we all know that once you get into the playoffs, really anything can happen, but they are as good, if not better, than any other team around the NHL. And they have the depth, the veteran savvy to get it done when the games will matter most in the playoffs. My second question is what will this team do, if anything, prior to the trade deadline? It's coming up in less than two months now on March 3rd. And we know that Don Sweeney is not shy on pulling the trigger when it comes to trades. In fact, I'd argue that is the strongest aspect of his uh, work as general manager is pulling off some big trades and good ones at that. Look to last season, trading uh, Euro Vakanin and John Warren, a couple picks for Hampus Lindholm the year before that bringing in Taylor Hall from the Buffalo Sabres. These are some pretty core players that he has been able to bring in at the past couple years at pretty reasonable prices as well. We all know Taylor Hall kind of had some say in that. Uh, Lindholm, not as much. And what's more, Sweeney was able to get them to re-up for several years, making the 
cost of those trades a bit more palatable. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that as a result of that Hampus Lindholm trade, the Bruins don't have a second round pick in 2023 or 2024. So that takes some, you know, bargaining chips out of the tool belt. They do have a first round pick in 2023, 24, and 25. Uh, 2023 specifically is projected to be a very strong draft. I don't know if I'd be rushing to trade a first round pick, but ideally it's the 32nd overall pick borderline second rounder. So, I mean, why not? If you have a chance to win the Stanley cup, then why not use all potential chips put them all on the table and go all in. Having said that, a factor, of course, is cap space. The Bruins right now have a projected deadline cap space of just $255,000. Not really giving you the flexibility to do much at all. That's with Craig Smith up on the big roster. We know that he had been recently waived. There's some flexibility there. They're putting him up and down in order to create some flexibility. But with him on the roster, uh, really deflates what they might be able to do at the trade deadline. Uh, Mike Riley's buried in the AHL. He's a potential trade chip. Chris Wagner buried as well, although he can be – or he – appears to be on the verge of being recalled and his cap hit of 1.35 million will be on the books. Now, if Jake DeBrusk is injured for any length of time, there's a possibility that he could be put on LTIR, clearing his 4 million in cap space and opening things up. Don't forget the lightning loophole. You can have guys on IR up until the end of the regular season and then activate them for the playoffs at no cap penalty. So we'll see what they're able to do in terms of opening up some cap space. They do have some assets that they can deal. Fabian Lysel might be floated. Uh, He's probably along with the... um, First round pick would be their most uh, attractive trade chips. Just seeing Mark Diver tweet here. Wagner was on the ice for Providence's sparsely attended game day optional in Pawtucket. Seems as though he's going to be flying to LA later today, joining the Bruins in advance of their game against the Kings tomorrow night. So we should get an official announcement on DeBrusque some point today or tomorrow when that is made clear. So let's assume the Bruins have minimal cap space to work with. What are their needs? I would argue they need a scoring depth winger. Uh, You can always add some depth on defense. And there's growing rumblings about the need to add a veteran backup goaltender with Jeremy Swayman not being quite up to par. For me... The biggest need is that scoring depth forward. We all know the top six, seven, eight forwards are set in stone when everybody's healthy. Marchand, Bergeron, DeBrusque, Hall, Krejci, Pasternak, Zaka, Coyle, for sure. Uh, You could probably throw Nick Foligno in there as surefire top nine guys with Trent Frederick rounding out the top 10. And then you have a mix of Nosik, Greer, Smith as your 11, 12, and 13 forwards. There's a lot of talk of going after a Patrick Kane or a Jonathan Taves in Chicago. What about Max Domi? He's a versatile winger who can score. We saw that up close and personal in game seven last year against the Carolina Hurricanes. He can also add some grit, some toughness to 
the bottom of the lineup. One guy I'd love to go after is Anthony Duclair in Florida. They're right up against the cap, despite being on the outside of the playoff picture looking in. Uh, they traded their first round pick last year for Ben Sherrod. It's not lottery protected. Um, so would they be willing to trade Anthony Duclair, who had a very productive season last year in order to be cap compliant and to gain some assets for the future? Uh, that's one guy that I would love to see in black and gold. I've said that several times over the past couple of years, when especially when he was available before last year as an unrestricted free agent. He does have this year and next on his contract at $3 million, which is very affordable. And last season, uh, he scored, uh, I believe, 31 goals in 74 games for the Florida Panthers. So he's a guy that I'd be going after, especially with Florida out of the playoff picture. On defense, look to Columbus. There's a guy named Vladislav Gavrikov who checks all the boxes for the Boston Bruins as a guy who could step in and offer some valuable depth on uh, the blue line. He's a left-hand shot, 27. Not a big score. He did have 33 points last year, but he's physical. And uh, perhaps you look at flipping a guy like Jakob Zborl for a more established guy like Gavrikov. So that's question number two. What do they do at the deadline? I don't think they'll go huge and go after a huge big name, but if DeBrusque is out for any length of time, that could change that. I'd go for someone who has a lower cap hit, but who can be effective like a Domi, a Duclair, or Gavrikov. Coming up after the break, I'm going to ask the third big question about the Bruins here in 2023. I do want to thank you again for making Locked On Bruins part of your day every day. Make sure you check out Locked On NHL Prospects next, your daily podcast covering the next generation of hockey superstars leading up to the NHL draft, plus NHL draft rankings, top prospect comparisons, and of course, a big focus on the World Juniors right now with the semifinals set for tonight. That's Locked On NHL Prospects, available on YouTube and wherever you get podcasts. All right, my third big question for the Bruins in 2023 is what will the team look like next season? If you look at Boston's cap friendly page, you see a ton of red and blue marking unrestricted and restricted free agents this summer. The biggest name, of course, is David Pasternak. He can become an unrestricted free agent. The hope is that he will agree to a contract extension with the Bruins. There was a report out a couple of days ago saying he was close to agreeing on an eight-year, $88 million contract. That's an easy guess to throw out there as a potential resolution to this situation. I hope that's what happens. But for the moment, he remains a potential unrestricted free agent. The only forwards who are signed for next season right now are Brad Marchand, Taylor Hall, Charlie Coyle, Jake DeBrusque, and A.J. Greer. Following that, you have Patrice Bergeron, David Krejci, Pavel Zaka, Craig Smith, Nick Foligno, and Thomas Nosek, all as unrestricted free agents, and Trent Frederick, as a restricted free agent. The hope is that the Bruins will re-up with Zaka. He could be a key part of the top six moving forward. We don't know yet what Bergeron and Krejci are planning. They probably don't even know either. They're focusing one game at a time. If, please, let it happen. The Bruins do win the cup. Could we see them go out on top? It's quite possible. If they don't win the cup, could we see them come back 
run it back, try again next year. That's also quite possible. Smith, I would think, would be gone. Nosick, possibly gone as well. Um, Felino, who knows? He could go either way. He could be a guy who comes back. He could be a guy who's retires if they win the cup. I could honestly see all three of those guys, Felino, Bergeron, and Krejci, deciding that's it if, of course, they win the cup. On the blue line, there's a lot much more certainty there. Six guys already signed for next season. The only unrestricted free agent is Connor Clifton. I'm sure the Bruins would like to have him back, although he may have priced himself out with his strong play this season. Jeremy Swayman's a restricted free agent. They're going to have to figure out his next deal. Uh, Chris Wagner's an unrestricted free agent. And there's some guys on the Providence side of things that you'll have to take care of as well. Notably, Mark McLaughlin, Jacob Lauco, and Jack Deshaun. So there's some big question marks, mostly on the NHL roster, and there could be some pretty high turnover for the Boston Bruins next season, depending on the outcome in the playoffs and what your Bergerons and your Krejci's decide to do specifically. There are some attractive free agents that will be hitting the market this off season. You got your Chicago Blackhawks, Taves, Kane. You have Vladimir Tarasenko and Ryan O'Reilly in St. Louis. Uh, Max Pacioretty, James Van Riemsdyk, John Klingberg. Uh, Sean Monahan, Dylan Larkin, Jordan Stahl. These are all names that will be unrestricted free agents this summer. Bo Horvat would be my number one target for the Boston Bruins, especially if Bergeron and Krejci decide not to come back. But that is a matter for the offseason, of course. The most pressing issues are... Jake DeBrusque's health, what happens at the trade deadline, and getting the job done in the playoffs. One option potentially is Jacob Vrana. He was waived yesterday by the Detroit Red Wings. If DeBrusque is going to be out for a while, put him on LTIR, grab Vrana. You're laughing. He's one of the best five-on-five scorers when he's in the lineup over the past few years. Probably not going to happen. The Bruins want to have some flexibility heading into the deadline. Brett Barnett on Twitter reminded me his AAV is over $5 million. Below that now, prorated, but still. Um, if the Bruins do put DeBrusque on LTAR, they could make room for that. Just saying. Anyways, that is today's episode of Locked on Bruins, my friends. Tomorrow on the podcast, we'll take a look at the cup check and assessing the top five teams around the NHL and where the Bruins rank among them, and also preview tomorrow night's game against the Los Angeles Kings. Uh, if you're looking for something to watch, we just started Slow Horses finally. Got a uh, trial of, of Apple Plus that came with our new TV that we bought two summers ago, I didn't realize. Uh, so we're watching that, really enjoying that so far. And... Uh, yeah, just trying to enjoy the final days of the boys being off school before everything goes back to normal come uh, come Monday. Thank you so much again for listening. Check out Locked On Prospects next, and we'll talk to you again here tomorrow on Locked On Boston Ruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day.